If you're using Playwright, you're probably aware of the test hooks before each and after each. These two test runner features allow you to run code right before or right after every test case. But when you want to apply setup and teardown to literally every test case, you will discover that you have to repeat yourself in every spec file. And while you now could say that extracting a setup and teardown into a JavaScript or TypeScript helper isn't the worst, it still adds a lot of noise to your spec files when you want to apply the same before and after each to every test. In this video, I will show you how you can use Playwright's automatic fixtures to do just that. Let's go. Here we have an example, one spec TS file that includes a single test case that loads some inline HTML. So pro tip, if you just want to test something out, you can always load HTML inline. And then it expects that this headline here is visible. And you might have guessed it, this test case is now surrounded by a before each and an after each. Usually you would use these test hooks to maybe prepare the page fixture and log in the current session or prepare some test data. In our case here, I'm keeping it simple though, and I'm just using Playwright's runtime annotations to push the start time and the end time into the Playwright test report. So let's see if this works and head over to the terminal and say npx Playwright test. Now we are running all the tests included in the project and I have two tests here. And we can now access the Playwright report by calling npx Playwright show report. And here we have the report with my two spec files that are included in the project. So we have here example one spec TS that includes our runtime annotations showing the current time. And when we look here into the test steps, we will find our before each hook here and our after each hook here. But what's included in the other test case? When we navigate back, we have here example to spec TS that pretty much does the same. It loads some inline HTML that is throwing some errors, but we will come back to this a little bit later. But it also includes an after each and a before each that push the current time into the report annotations. So when we look at these two files side by side, we see that they both call before each, after each. And even though we could now extract this here into a helper function, I would like to put these before each and after each calls into a very single place so that I don't have to worry like at all in my test case that these annotations are added to all my test cases. So let's close this test file again and let's inspect what we have here. If you look closely, you will discover that test and expect aren't coming from Playwright test itself, but rather a base file. And this is a very common setup when you're relying on custom Playwright fixtures. In this video, I will keep the explanations on how to set up and use custom fixtures very short because we want to deal with automatic fixtures. But if you want to learn more, check out these two videos that are also available here on the channel and the links are in the description below. But let's check this base file. This Playwright setup file imports test from Playwright, renames it to base, and then calls extend on it so that we can provide custom fixtures like this page one over here. And then it also exports expect directly from Playwright test so that we can use it in our spec files. Whenever now a spec file imports test here from our base file and uses the page object, this function will be run first. And whatever we call here use with will pop out in our test cases. So this now means that we could go into our test files and we could take this snippet here, we could remove the before each hook and we could place it right before we call use. And similarly, we could also take the after each hook that we have here and we can now remove it from here and call it after we call use. So let's also clean up the second spec file because we now have our before each and after each in a single place. So we can remove these. And we now can head over to our terminal and we can say npx playwright test again. And after that, we will have a look at the report. Here we have it. Now here is our example one spec TS. It still has the annotations. And when we look at the test steps, we see that we have here our custom page fixture that added the annotations for start and end. And while this now works for every test case that uses the page object, this isn't a real global before each or after each. So let's apply an automatic fixture. And we can do that by jumping into our base extent call and registering another fixture. 
So we can now say here that we want to register a time logger and instead of passing a function, we'll pass over an array that includes a function as a first element and then an options object as the second element. Now we can go into the function and we can just say await wait use, similar how we did it in, in the fixture. And then we can go into the options object and we can say that we want to say auto true. Here we go. Now TypeScript isn't particularly happy about it. So let's take time logger. Let's bring it here into our types and let's say that there's nothing coming out of time logger because we're calling use with nothing here. But when will this function now run? When we check the playwright docs, it states that automatic fixtures are set up and run for every test and in every worker, regardless if the test cases try to use time logger or not. So this now means that we can take this friend. So our start logger, we can add it before our use call. And similarly, we can take this friend here, the end call, we can clean up our page fixture. And now we have a similar result, but every test case doesn't matter if it uses page or context or request will always have these start and end annotations. So let's see if this works. Let's head back to the terminal, say npx playwright test, and let's call npx playwright show report right after. Here we go. And when we now look at the test report, we will see that we still have our lovely annotations, but they're now coming from our time logger that is called before and after every test case. But what's up with the second test case? That is throwing JavaScript errors. Let's bring in another fixture. When we go back to our base extent call, we can take our time logger and let me just quickly copy this friend and we can now call it exception logger. Here we go. Let's clean up these things because right now we don't want to do any annotations anymore, but instead we will use the page fixture here. So it doesn't matter if your fixture is a normal fixture or an automatic fixture, you can still get in the other registered fixtures. So let me go ahead and let's make TypeScript app again. So let's say exception logger. And this one will also be void. Here we go. And now we have here a similar blueprint for our exception logger automatic fixture. So let's start by initializing a new array and let's call it errors. Errors and errors is of type error. That is correct. Now we can start fiddling. <laughs> This looks very good, Copilot, here we go. So whenever there's now an uncaught exception in the page, we will push it into our errors array. And then after the test case was done, right? Remember everything before use is called before your test run and everything after use will be your teardown. So everything after the test case. And this then means that after the test case was done, we have access to all the errors on the page that potentially happened. So we can say, if there were errors on the page, we want to please throw a new error and let's fail our test case. Here. So let's say something went wrong in JS land. Here we go. But now we don't know what actually happened on the page. So let's bring in some logging and I'm copy and pasting this because you don't want to see me typing all this. So if there are errors on the page, we're also adding a test attachment that includes all the error messages and the error call stack. And this is just some nice format editing so that it looks good in the Playwright test report. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we got. So NPX Playwright tests, here we go. We already have a failing test case. And when we now look at the report, we'll discover that example two spec is actually a failing test case. We still have our annotations. Here we have our error that tells us that something went wrong in JS land. And because we added the attachment, we can now go to our attachments here below. And here we have the JavaScript exceptions that were inlined in the HTML that we have seen in the page go to call. And I just think this is a beautiful way of tracking quality, of shipping good stuff. So this way you can test all your daily business in your end-to-end -end tests. But in case there's something throwing in your JavaScript, Playwright will let you know about it. Big fan over here. There's one last point I want to make before we wrap it up. When we look at our exception logger, we defined it as an automatic fixture. And because we're using page here, you might argue that you could also, if you have a custom page fixture, place the same code here and here. And that's right. 
But for me, this is personal preference. Whenever I define a custom page fixture, and maybe you don't have it, I like to have inside of my page fixture everything that is end-to-end -end test related. So everything that I need to actually run my end-to-end -end tests. In this case here, I like to attach these loggers or these monitors outside of my page fixture so that everything is nicely in order. But of course, this is personal preference. And with this, we made it to the end of this week's video. If you wonder what's up with this raccoon and what we do here at Checkly, with Checkly, you can take your existing Playwright end-to-end -end tests and run them on a schedule from around the globe to monitor your production environment. So whenever something is off in production, you will be the first one to know because we will send you a timely alert that something is off. And obviously, we are huge Playwright fans over here. So if you want to learn more on how to get the most out of Playwright end-to-end -end testing, check out our Playwright Tips playlist here on YouTube. We are close to 50 videos and we're not going to stop. And now we're really done. If you have any comments or questions, drop them below. I love publishing follow-up videos. And with that, I will see you in our next Playwright Tips video here on the Checkly YouTube channel. I will see you soon.